All right, so for example, if you want to do just the number one injector, I mean, compared to a DD-15, this is kind of a pain in the ass, but this is a good reliable engine. So to do number one injector, we have to take off number one Jake, number two Jake, you definitely want to label them. One and two Jake is coming off. Then this nut comes off, 18 millimeter, and this 12 point comes off, and two other 12 points come off on the cam uh, assembly, the, you know, the rockers and all that stuff. It's gonna come up, that's one piece I'll show you. So, each bolt on the Jake is torqued down by approximately 85 foot-pounds to 90. So, they come loose fairly easily. I like to put the right stuff silicone on my Jake brake wire bolts because I don't want these coming off. So they're still not, you know, it takes a little more effort to get them off, but if you spin them, the silicone breaks off and you can just get them off. So probably not one handed. So that's it. You just loosen the little screw loose, pull this out, preferably leave the screw in if you can because. You don't want to drop this in there. Take your number one Jake brake wire for the solenoid. Just stuff it right behind that hose. Okay, where does the number one Jake brake go? It goes right there. So there's our number one injector. And I want to pull it out. But like I said, I want to pull, I have to pull the valve train out, you know, all these here to get to the injector. So the last thing holding on the rest of this is the number two Jake needs to come out right now. A little windy out here. All right, number Jake is uh, number two. Jake is pulled out. Now for the number two, what I do is I just pick it up and I walk back this way. And I got a little stool right here, and I'll step on the stool and I'll come around here, and there she is. All right, when you take the rocker assembly off, just you know you got your 12 millimeter, you get your 18, and you basically want to loosen these evenly. At the same time, so I'll loosen this one, that one, that one, that one, come back. You just want to do it nice and evenly, and because you don't want to snap this. If you take one off, if you, if you take two off, just two, and you leave the other two on, this will actually bend up because of the spring pressure. So you're flexing it. It's not. It's not meant to be flexed. Windy. With all these bolts loose, you want to leave them in. The reason I'm saying that is because if you pull this out and your rockers want to go sliding that way, they're going to fall off. And that's the last thing you don't, you don't want that. Okay? Keep them on and be very careful on this side because there's nothing, you know, once you pull this past that stud, this rocker can definitely go that way and fly off. So have something cleaned up and laid out with paper towels or cardboard to hold these rockers. And then come in with two hands, grab here real tight, grab here real tight. Be very careful, get some very good grip around this and carefully walk down your tire and lay this out on your cardboard or paper towels. Be very careful. There she is. I got her laid out on two uh, layers of paper towels inside on the truck floor. Nice place to keep it. Another good place is uh, your trailer.
So this is very, uh, some of these are ceramic. You don't wanna crack them. Some of them are metal, but the ceramic ones can crack. And uh, these you have to take extremely good care of because if you mess these up, these will mess your cam up. Now with the rock assembly uh, removed, we have access to number one, two, and three injectors. Okay, so that's what it takes to get to the injectors on the Detroit 60 series motor. All right, these are 6977 series injectors. We're pulling number one. We need our three sixteenths to take the two injector wires off. These are very, you know, be careful with these as well. When you go to torque these down and put the new injector back in, do not over tighten these. You just want them snug. If you over tighten these, they will snap in half. We have our 15 millimeter nut holding the injector down by approximately 55 foot pounds of torque. So, oh boy. All right, there's a retainer assembly for the injector here. Take it out, take everything out together. You have a bolt, a washer, and this assembly. Okay, now I believe Detroit recommends uh, buying new bolts. I've been reusing these for a long time uh, with two other trucks. I've never had a problem. So I torque my 55 foot, foot pounds of torque. You do what you want to do. Uh, I believe Detroit recommends uh, buying new bolts. So I'm just going to throw them over here with the other stuff. Okay, so now for the rookie. He'll be trying to wiggle his injector out. He'll be like, oh, it's not coming out. And then he might think, oh, no, I need a special pry bar or tool to get this out. You don't, you don't need that. The easiest way to get this out with just the bare minimal, you know, tool set is you need a large flathead screwdriver and vice grips. It's because when I pry this up, there's going to be fuel in the cylinder head. It's going to rush into the cylinder. At that point, what I want to do is actually crank the engine to get the piston to go to top dead center. I want some fuel to come up out of here and flood this area. I'm going to pat it down with paper towels. But there's a lot of fuel that is going to go into the cylinder. And you want to be ready for it. Here's our little setup right here. Alright, so we have the large flathead with a thick end. Okay. We're going to wedge it between the injector and the cylinder head at the bottom. Okay. That's our setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt this as far as I can that way. I'm gonna press forward and I'm going to turn the vice grips. What that's going to do is slowly pry this up. There you go. You see that? Fuel's going in the cylinder. Okay, it's disappeared. We're gonna crank the engine over slowly right now. Fuel's gonna come back up through the injector hole. There it comes. We're approaching top dead center. Distance still traveling up. All right, I got some of the fuel to come back out of the injector hole, so I have paper towels in there. And I press this flathead in very lightly, not going to be rough here, and we want to turn the paper towels. You want to make sure the flathead's not bumping the metal. Just do it a couple times, clean it up, soak up some of that diesel. So, I'm going to clean that up just a little more. Here's the injector that came out. First thing is you want to inspect the O-rings. So, all the O-rings look good, and it has the large O-ring at the end. It's not all dried up and bent out of shape like the other one, so this is a newer injector. Um, it's a reliable. It has a uh, 31 injector value. 
and that's it. So it looks pretty good. This injector might be completely fine, but here we go. Feel around the surface where the O-ring seats. Should feel very smooth. There should be no nicks or anything like that. So, okay, get a good visual on the bottom. Looks very good. And uh, take your large O-ring. I don't have any more graphite gaskets for the bottom, unfortunately. I'm out of them. So you really don't need one. A new engine doesn't even come with them. So just drop it in. Okay. Take a large flathead and carefully just, just let it sit right down there. You're not pressing hard. You're pressing very lightly. Now it's seated in position. Now again, this is going to be a two-handed job to install the injector. Before installing the injector, take some of the oil that's been sitting up here and smother it all around the injector, everywhere, just everywhere. So take your two hands and keep it vertically straight and slowly lower it into the hole. And remember, before you're doing this, your piston is at top dead center. If you're not sure it's a top dead center, put a small screwdriver in there. It's even worse as you go down the cylinder head. So if I pulled number three, all the fuel from two and three are gonna rush, two, one and two are gonna rush into three. Three's gonna fill up to the brim. If that piston is at the bottom and that entire cylinder is filling up with fuel and you go and put the injector in and don't take the fuel out, then when you go to start the engine, it's gonna hydro lock. It's not going to start. So I don't wanna scare you with this. But if you just do it right, you won't have a problem. If you realize that you ever do hydro lock the engine and you can't start it, you want your big wrench on here and you want to slowly turn it over. And take your time as you squeeze the fuel through any piston ring or valve cracks or anything like that. It'll get its way out if you crank it over manually. But it will take time. With the injector in the hole, snug, Keep it centered between your two valve springs. It could be this way too far or that way. Keep it nice and centered. Okay, we have our injector retainer and bolt back in place. I'm going to torque it slowly. Just slowly snugging down. All right, she's all torqued down, ready to go. The uh, rocker assembly is about to go back in. Before I do that, you wanna check and lightly wiggle each connector, each connector going to the injector on the ones you have access to. So it's very lightly, they're all very tight, which is good. Get into number four, number four, and the edge of number five. So they're all tight. Before she goes in, take a rag, clean out. Anything in there, you don't want any debris in there. Oil's fine, but not debris. You should have a record of all your injector values, one through six, so definitely write it down, don't forget it. Number one is zero, zero, and so on. So this one, uh, let's see, that is, uh, that's the one that was replaced a couple days ago, number four, so that's injector value number five. With the rocker assembly installed, but not fully installed, I still have to torque it down. Just basically put it into place carefully, starting on this side. Sometimes these flip upside down, you gotta carefully flip them into place. There's room between here and here. Each one, when it's settled, you should be able to move it back and forth. This way, slightly, you'll feel the clearance. You wanna wiggle them all. Make sure everything's good before you proceed to torque your bolts. And guys, I'd sure appreciate it if you could smash the like button. It would help me out with the algorithm. And I certainly want to be posting uh, more of these videos um, with this truck, with the engine, and all sorts of repairs. All right. The rockers are bolted down, torqued. Everything's good. Everything feels good. Everything looks good. 
So before I slap this all back together, I'm going to check the valve lash uh, on the exhaust valves, uh, everything. I checked all the intakes uh, a couple days ago. So I want to loosen up the exhaust ones just a little more. They've gotten slightly tighter from the spec. So I'm going to put that in uh, a different video. I definitely want to thank you guys for watching this video and please smash the like button if you like this video and subscribe. I have more coming your way um, with all sorts of other repairs if you're interested on this truck. I mean, pretty much everything that you could possibly do to a Freelander Century or Columbia, I would make videos of if people like these videos. So until next time, this is Slim Diesel and thanks for watching.